Welcome to Elliot's PT Podcast. I'm here to help you find your balance and live your best life guilt-free. I don't believe there is a one-size-fits-all approach for health and fitness. We're all different and we need to find out what works for us. I'm passionate about helping people make realistic, long-term lifestyle changes that they will stick to and they will take with them forever. I don't believe in crazy diets or short-term fixes. We all need to live and find a perfect balance in diet and exercise that suits our individual needs. I want to help you find your exercise mojo, feel great and achieve wonderful things. Here is Elliot's PT Podcast by Renee Elliot. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Elliot's PT Podcast. So today I want to talk about your recovery and how so much magic happens in your recovery. And I really feel that it is something that is forgotten about or there's no real importance placed on it. When really, we work really hard in your in your gym session, you work really hard in there, and then you might go away and you might not think about it again, but it could be a few things that you could become aware of or a few things that you could tweak that would really, really help you in your recovery and help you get a better result. So just in our SAP classes at the moment, we have started a new class and our focus is really on building strength. So it's really important to um, think about your recovery after those sessions because um, we are really focusing on increasing our reps. We are really looking at increasing the weight if we can and we are focusing on the same moves for four weeks. And then um, I really want everybody to understand that when the gym session finishes, the magic is in your recovery. So obviously there is no better way that you can help your muscles recover than by eating well, uh, eating healthy foods and getting a good night's sleep. So, but living an overall healthy lifestyle is the most important step that you can obviously take to maximize your muscle recovery. So no recovery method can make up for poor nutrition and lack of rest. So they really, the poor nutrition lack of rest is really the most important thing that I want you to think about when you're recovering. So to become stronger, faster, fitter, you really have to push your body harder, but then you also have to rest too. So all workouts, especially really tough ones, they add a stress onto your body. So you are fatiguing and you're tiring out your muscles um, when you're working out, which means you're causing little microscopic uh, damage to the muscle cells. So I remember the first time I explained this to my mum, she was like horrified. She was like, I don't think I want to use weights, but the muscles, you've got to tear your muscles and then they need to repair. But that's what we need to think about the recovery for the repair because they will repair stronger and leaner. And that's what we always need to focus on, how well they repair. So the changes that you're causing uh, can do your body a lot of good. And that's gonna to lead to your muscle, your muscle growth, fat loss, your improved insulin sensitivity, reduced inflammation, uh, better cardiovascular health and overall healthier body. But you need to give your body time for these good changes to happen before you start stressing it out again. That's why the rest really allows you to benefit from your workout. So if you are smashing yourself every day in the gym, you're not giving yourself a rest and you are just you know, doing workout after workout, it's really not gonna help you. You really need to put in rest days and the rest days can be just as important as your workout. So the damage that exercise causes, it triggers your body's immune system to start to go to repair that damage. And when your body's tissues um, from like your heart and your, your bones, your heart, your lungs, they recover, they'll become slightly fitter than what they were before. So that way, next time you perform, you work out, you won't suffer as much damage. So who remembers when they first joined a gym or they first did a different class? I have it happen to me all the time. Um, new people come and their first few sessions, they might feel like they can't sit on the toilet and they struggle to work. So that's called DOMS, uh, Delayed Onset of Muscle Soreness. And you might have that when you just start something new, but then that tends to go away. It's just because your body's getting more used to it. Um, so, so you don't need to be scared of those things. You know, you actually need to cause that damage so that your body 
can um, adapt from that. So when you do this again and again, and we've got this stress and then recovery, uh, that's just gonna result in your improved fitness. So how can you make sure that you're really, really maximizing your recovery? So as I said, we've got these new sessions that we've been doing and we're really, really focusing on, on our strength. Uh, you're recording everything down and I'm just wanting to make sure that we, how everyone can understand how what you do inside the gym or the studio is just as important as what you do um, what you do outside is just as important as the studio. So what I want you to think about is after you um, after you finish your workout, let's say number one thing is make your protein your focus of food. Okay, so when you exercise, uh, your protein that make up your muscle fibers, they're, they're the thing that's damaged. So you wanna consume protein after your workout and um, to help your body recover and repair. So, um, so research has shown about 20 to 40 grams of protein um, is enough to maximize muscle growth, okay, um, after, after your workout. So, oh, so, and also depending on the workout that you're doing, you could have it post-workout, you could have protein uh, post-workout or protein um, pre-workout pre as well. So uh, before you work out, it is important to think about um, how you're fueling yourself. Research has shown that women perform better when they have food in their stomachs. I also find that when I have something in my stomach, uh, I find, yeah, I, it definitely makes a difference to my workout. So post-workout, you also want to think about what your carbohydrate source, like short, intense exercises your muscles use glycogen as their primary form of energy we want to we want to restore we want to rapidly restore the glycogen uh, levels in less than about four hours so um you can do this by using you know white potatoes rice um those types of things after your workout so you could include that in your um you know your protein plus plus your carbohydrate in general, for a great recovery, we want to have an overall, so an overall balanced diet. So you think about when you finish your workout, whatever your next lot of food that you're consuming is what your body is going to use to recover. So if you are having McDonald's after your workout, that's what your body is going to use to recover. If you're having, you know, a, um, a homemade meal that's, you know, like not processed, all those types of things, your body's gonna to respond to that a lot better than something that's high in sugar, um, those types of things. But generally, for, for optimal recovery, we want to have uh, an overall balanced diet. So it can definitely ensure that we don't have any nutrient deficiencies, which will um, you know, impair the muscle's ability to recover. So what is an overall balanced diet? So it is just, minimizing your consumption of ultra processed foods, uh, eating plenty of fruits and vegetables and getting um, at least, you know, 1.5 to 2 grams um, of protein per kilogram of your body weight. All right. When we think about, yeah, so I always try to think whatever the next, after I do a workout, whatever the next thing I eat is what my body is going to use to recover so i want to really make that something good <laughs> something really good for me and it um it doesn't have to be something crazy it, it's you know if you're on the go a protein shake is a great option um you don't have to have it straight away you know you've got you know but whatever you eat within the next kind of two hours if, is what your body's going to use if you uh, finish your workout and then you don't eat for four hours or five hours after because you know, then, then you're not giving your anything, your muscles anything to repair. So as you know, if you, you know, if you've worked out, you see this, we've got this delayed, um, your DOM, so the delayed onset of muscle soreness. So you find that you might be sore. The next day you might be a little bit sore, but then the third day, the second, so the next day, you might be, the second day, you might be your sorest, but we really want to be recovered by the third day. So what I find with lots of people that if we're getting to the fourth or the fifth day and you've not recovered, you know, we really need to be starting to looking looking at your food. 
um, looking at your food and how you are fueling yourself before you work out and after you work out. It is, it is a really important part of your recovery. Okay, so another important part is staying hydrated. So uh, dehydration, it can um, definitely impair your muscles' ability to repair themselves. And if you are someone that is prone to becoming more dehydrated, um, especially if you're exercising in hot weather. And so it is recommended to have about 500 mils to one litre uh, extra per hour that you exercise. Um, you can also try to sip uh, water and that while you are working out. So water is such an important part because remember, especially in hot weather, uh, you're sweating more and we need to make sure that we're replacing that. So again, these are the things that we need to be thinking about with our recovery. Uh, you also need to be thinking about your sleep. So sleep is when your muscles are repairing. Sleep is when the real magic happens. So you want to, um, so you know, like if you're doing we're doing your strength session, you're really um, straining the muscles, you're really pushing yourself to the limit. You're doing that, but then you are only getting three or four hours sleep a night. You're not going to expect the best recovery. Um, but, you know, optimally, we would like to have, you know, seven to eight hours um, of sleep per night. Some athletes have over 10. <laughs> and, um, you know, you want to really think about ensuring that you get that sleep because like I said, you've worked hard and we want to, these are the things that we want to be thinking about after our workout. So different research has shown that sleep deprivation, uh, it can impair your muscles recovery um, by um, affecting the body, your body's inflammation reaction and the production of hormones that will help your muscle growth. So put sleep as your number one thing to think about or number two thing to think about after your workout. How, how well do you sleep the night before? Uh, the other thing we want to think about is stretching. So stretching is a really important part of the workout. I see so many people that work out and then they just rush off. So stretching is giving you the, it's helping your muscles repair. It's uh, obviously going to help prevent injuries. It's, it is such an important part of your workout. So when you finish your workout, do stretches. You can even do stretches at night. If you're feeling sore, uh, you know, like that, you're feeling that DOMS, the thing to do if you have that DOMS, do not do not sit and do nothing, have an active recovery. So an active recovery would mean that you might take a walk, you can do stretches, you can do all of those things and that really, really help, uh, will really, really help your recovery. I don't know about you, but there's been lots of people that have, I've seen lots of stuff lately, more stuff, um, you know, about people doing um, water therapy or the ice, um, or cold showers, those types of stuff. So, you know, there's, and you can, I've seen people doing, um, so contrasting water therapy. So they're going from hot water to then very cold water. I actually did that when we were in Budapest and it was um, pretty cool. Um, and the change in the temperatures actually stimulate um, the contraction dilation of your blood vessels and it changes your heart rate. So uh, other research has found that contrasting bath therapy it helps can help reduce the muscle soreness post-workout. Um, results are, are definitely limited, and I think you know research is is not great on this. But you know, but you know the the hot and the cold baths um, can be great for your recovery after your workout. And you know, like yeah, we've seen people um, doing those ice sitting in those ice, but more athletes sitting in those ice. Um, I've known people to have cold showers after they work out. The thing to not do is if you finish a workout and then you go for a hot shower and you then think, oh, I'll stretch in the shower. Uh, so obviously with the heat, uh, you can, the heat, your muscles um, expand more and you can lead yourself to overstretching and injuries. So when we are thinking about our recovery, we want to think, Again, you've worked really hard in your workout. You know, we want to make sure we're eating right. We want to staying hydrated, looking at our sleep. And we want to, you know, looking at reducing, you know, if you're going, if you finish your workout and then you go out and then you drink all day, you know, that's, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. But just know that those things will be hindering your workout. You're not going to optimize your recovery. So alcohol, um, 
has many damaging effects to your health and um, so there is different research that says that if we're consuming alcohol after exercising it can impair your muscles ability to replenish that glycogen after an endurance exercise so um, it can also impair protein synthesis in your muscles so it's just it's just not optimal um, I think just just think about what your goal is and you know if you're going out um, there's there's nothing wrong with having a few drinks you know but if you are working out and then you know going on a bit of a bender then you're going to be not getting the best recovery possible i'm not saying don't work out i'm just saying it will hinder your recovery you know muscle recovery takes time and it's important it is just such an important factor to to think about so we just want to think about when you finish your workout what's the things that you do so if you do a morning workout i want to think that i'm going to the first meal that i eat whatever that is i want to make sure that it's a protein focus because that's going to help me repair i want to make sure that i'm drinking lots of water and i'm staying hydrated i want to keep moving uh, stretching doing those types of things to help my muscles along and i want to optimize my sleep so i want to make sure that i'm getting enough sleep because the real magic happens magic happens in that sleep and when you are focusing on those things you know when you kind of just go get yep, there the things i'm going to just put a little bit of focus on after my workout you are going to get such better results because you're giving yourself the best chance for the best recovery you're going to feel better from getting more sleep and all of those things muscle recovery takes time and you know the amount of time it takes for your muscle to recover uh, can depend on the type of exercise you've done your fitness level and the difficulty of your workout so there are so many different factors relating it the volume intensity and duration of your workout they all play, play a role in determining how taxing it is on your body you know the other thing is that if um you know a relatively light workout your muscles are going to recover quite quickly but where something more challenging it might take two or three days and then really really intense workouts they can take even longer so we just you just need to, you know like a walk you know i wouldn't really think that if you're someone that walks regularly i wouldn't really think about that as much as a recovery but if you've done a weighted session we want to we want to think really focus more on the other factors for our recovery so other things that can affect our recovery time, they can include obviously how well we sleep, how much nutrition you're getting, how much stress you're dealing with. So stress plays a big part. Um, if your exercises that you were doing involve different muscle groups, uh, or if you're working to a maximum effort, um, it's really, really important to give your body time to recover fully after your workout so when you're exercising we are creating that damage to our muscles and it's during the recovery period that your muscles can repair and those tiny tears that form during the exercise remember as i said earlier the muscles tear and then they repair and when they repair they repair stronger and leaner so if you don't give your muscles time to recuperate you're going to risk injuring yourself and you're not going to get the most out of your workout so we want to as i said before um, the other factors that we want to think about is our stress. So you can just think about what your, how high, how where your stress factors at. If your stress is quite high, um, there could be things that you could be doing to help reduce your stress, which is going to help with your recovery. So it can be meditations, it can be walking, um, it can be reading, it can be you know going to the beach. Lots of different things. But stress plays plays a part on how on how deep breathing is a great way to reduce your stress. So yeah, stress plays a big factor as well. So I just want me to think we've got these nice, hard, intense sessions and they're great and they're challenging you and you're challenging yourself in the gym. But when you come out of the gym, there, there are things that we need to consider too. So the more that we can consider those things that happen out of the gym, uh, you're gonna get a better result in the gym. And just to be mindful as well, um, I have spoke about this before on the podcast, but, but obviously um, your cycle, your cycle pay makes a difference to how you may recover or how you may feel after your workout. It will also make a difference to your workout. And then the other thing is how, how 
or we're talking about stress or how you're feeling in general. So when you are, if you've had, if you've come into the gym and you've had a really rough morning and you have, um, you've spilt your cup of coffee on you, you um, had someone cut you off while you were driving to the gym, you slept in, you were rushing, you know, you're going to come in and you're going to already be in that stress state before your workout. So your workout might not be the most optimal or your best workout you've had. So that is something to take into consideration for your recovery as well. So I, in that situation, I would really be focusing my recovery, my recovery on, I would still, you know, make protein my focus. I'd still would focus on the water, but I would look at really trying to reduce my stress because I've had that really stressful start to my day. But I also wouldn't be disappointed at myself if my workout, if I didn't get the the most reps I ever did or if I didn't get a, you know, a, a personal best or anything during that time because I know I came in that stress state. But when you come to your workout and you've had a great night's sleep, you woke up in time, you had time to eat some food before, you came to the gym, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be it's that right time of the month because we know there's different phases where we have more energy you are you're going to really be able to get a better result and and the same result um will be even better when we focus on that recovery so just think about outside of the gym your recovery is just as important as your workout i don't want to see people working out every day we need to rest and your your rest is just as important and you can think about if you're going to the gym, depending on what you're doing, you can work opposing muscle groups. If you feel like you have to go every day, uh, you can do different styles of workouts. So obviously less intense workouts uh, in between more intense workouts. Um, you know, in between you can do yoga, walking, that things in between more intense workouts. Look at the duration of your workout. Those types of things, they're all factors that will affect your recovery. But Remember, the magic is in the recovery. The real magic, when we repair, when those um, you know muscles get leaner and stronger and we get that nice toned look that we're all looking for, that is gonna happen in your recovery. An emphasis on your recovery and make it an important factor, not just coming into the gym and giving it your all, but also give it your all outside of the gym. If you would like any help on how to make sure that you are optimizing your recovery and that you would gain the most out of your workout, make sure that you message me because um, we can help you with that. So uh, hopefully this has been able to help you and I want this to be a reminder to really put an emphasis on your recovery and let's see how the magic can happen when we, um, when we finish our workouts. Okay, I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Elliot's PT podcast. I hope you've been able to find this information of use to you. If you know someone who might be, enjoy this podcast, please share it with them and ensure that you subscribe so you can be the first to know when new podcasts are released. If you have the time to leave a five-star review, that would be amazing and it would be greatly appreciated. If you do so, please screenshot and share onto any of our socials and tag us. Then email the screenshot to hello at elliotspt.com and we will send you a free gift to your inbox. Thanks so much. Have an amazing day. Speak soon.